The U.S. military stands as one of the most formidable forces on the global stage, boasting an impressive array of weaponry. Yet, despite its existing might, the military is actively engaged in the development of new offensive tools to safeguard its interests. One such innovation currently undergoing testing is the astonishingly powerful $500 million railgun. But what exactly is a railgun, how does it operate, and what strategic purpose will it serve for the United States in future conflicts? Railguns represent advanced devices that harness electromagnetic forces to propel projectiles at incredible velocities. They can be likened to futuristic cannons capable of launching bullets faster than the speed of sound, hitting targets situated hundreds of kilometers away. These railguns offer a multitude of potential applications, ranging from weaponry to space launch systems and plasma accelerators. In the following discussion, we will delve into the inner workings of railguns, elucidate their intended functions, and trace their evolutionary development. So, what makes railguns tick? Railguns are constructed with two parallel metal rails connected to a power source. A sliding armature is inserted between these rails, securing the projectile. When an electrical current courses through the rails and the armature, it generates a magnetic field that propels the armature and its payload along the rails. Subsequently, the projectile is detached from the armature and hurdles toward the designated target. The velocity of the projectile is contingent on various factors, including the length of the rails, the strength of the current, the mass of the projectile, and the resistance posed by the surrounding atmosphere. The speed at which railgun projectiles travel is influenced by several key factors, the length of the rails, the strength of the current, the mass of the projectile, and the extent of air resistance. Longer rails allow the projectile more time to accelerate, while a stronger current exerts greater force on it. Lighter projectiles can achieve higher speeds, and reduced air resistance results in less drag. Railgun projectiles can reach speeds of up to Mach 8.8, equivalent to 8.8 .8 times the speed of sound or approximately 10,000 km per hour. This velocity surpasses that of conventional guns, which typically fire bullets at speeds of up to Mach 3, or 3 times the speed of sound, approximately 4,000 km per hour. The remarkable speed of railgun projectiles endows them with substantial kinetic energy, enabling them to inflict significant damage without the need for explosives or propellants. So. What is the purpose of railguns? Railguns offer several advantages over traditional firearms, including higher muzzle velocity, extended range, reduced recoil, and lower cost. These attributes render railguns particularly well-suited for military applications, such as anti-aircraft, anti-ship, anti-missile, and anti-satellite weaponry. Moreover, railguns can be employed to launch spacecraft or satellites into orbit, offering a more cost-effective and efficient alternative to conventional rockets. They also find utility in accelerating plasma or particles for scientific experiments and fusion reactors. While railguns have been subjects of research for over a century in various countries, they have yet to see combat deployment. The concept of the railgun dates back to its invention by French engineer Louis Octave Fauchonville in 1918. Although it was never tested or used during World War I, subsequent efforts saw a successful railgun test conducted by German scientist Joachim Hansler in 1944, but it came too late for use in World War II. The first modern railgun was developed by Australian physicist Richard Marshall in 1962, but its application remained limited to scientific purposes. The U.S. Navy, on the other hand, has been conducting railgun tests for over a decade, achieving impressive results. These devices leverage electromagnetic force to launch projectiles at extraordinary speeds, eliminating the need for explosives or propellants. The Navy seeks to harness the advantages of railguns, including higher muzzle velocity, extended range, and reduced recoil, for its military endeavors. In 2005, the U.S. Navy embarked on the development of the railgun, channeling approximately $500 million into the project. Their primary objective was to engineer a weapon system capable of launching projectiles at staggering speeds of up to Mach 8.8, .8, equivalent to approximately 10,000 km per hour, with a striking range extending up to 200 km. Envisaging versatile applications, the Navy intended to employ the railgun in anti-aircraft, anti-ship, anti-missile, and anti-satellite missions. 
The Navy's experimental railgun is an impressive 12-meter-long apparatus, composed of two parallel metal rails linked to a power source. Within this system, a sliding armature is positioned between the rails, securing the projectile. When an electric current courses through the rails and armature, it generates a magnetic field, propelling the armature and the projectile along the rails. Subsequently, the projectile is detached from the armature, embarking on its trajectory towards the intended target. Several test sites have hosted the Navy's railgun trials, including the Naval Surface Warfare Center in Dahlgren, Virginia, and the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. The Dahlgren facility stands as a central hub for railgun experimentation and operational demonstrations, boasting a 12-meter-long railgun capable of projecting projectiles at Mach 8.8 speeds. Furthermore, the facility houses a potent 32-megajoule pulsed power system, providing ample electricity to power the railgun. Complementing its capabilities, the facility is equipped with an array of sensors and cameras, instrumental in measuring and documenting the railgun's performance and the effects of its shots. The Dahlgren facility has been a prominent venue for the U.S. Navy to showcase the railgun to both the public and the media. Noteworthy events include the Navy's 2008 achievement when they fired a groundbreaking 10 megajoule shot, surpassing the previous record of 9 megajoules. Subsequently, in 2010, the Navy achieved a remarkable feat by firing a 33 megajoule shot, establishing a new world record. To provide context, a megajoule quantifies energy and is equivalent to the kinetic energy of a one-ton vehicle traveling at 160 km per hour. The 33 megajoule shot represented the kinetic energy of a one-ton vehicle moving at 560 km per hour. In 2012, the Navy exhibited the railgun to then-Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta, who lauded the weapon as a game-changing capability. Admiral Jonathan Greenert, the Chief of Naval Operations, witnessed a demonstration in 2014 and expressed that the weapon could potentially be deployed on ships by 2020. In 2017, the railgun garnered the attention and support of Secretary of Defense James Mattis. Moreover, the Dahlgren facility has played a pivotal role in the development and testing of novel railgun projectiles. Among these, the hypervelocity projectile, HVP, stands out, comprising a tungsten shell weighing approximately 13 kilograms and measuring around 60 centimeters in length. The HVP is capable of achieving speeds up to Mach 6, approximately 7,000 kilometers per hour, with a range of up to 160 kilometers. What sets it apart is its ability to maneuver in flight and alter its trajectory to evade obstacles or intercept incoming threats. The HVP's versatility extends to various missions, encompassing surface warfare, air defense, ballistic missile defense, and long-range strikes. Importantly, it can be fired from existing guns such as the MK-45 naval gun or the M-77 howitzer. The Navy has conducted numerous test firings using a variety of projectiles, including solid metal slugs, sabo rounds, and hypervelocity projectiles. In the pursuit of maximizing the railgun's potential, the Navy has explored different power sources, including capacitors, batteries, and generators. The Navy's most remarkable achievement in this realm was recorded in 2010 when they fired a 33 megajoule shot, setting a new world record. As a frame of reference, a megajoule represents a unit of energy equivalent to the kinetic energy of a one-ton vehicle moving at 160 km per hour. In this instance, the 33 megajoule shot corresponded to the kinetic energy of a one-ton vehicle traveling at 560 km per hour. This projectile reached an impressive speed of Mach 7, approximately 8,500 km per hour, and successfully struck a target situated 100 km away. In addition to its railgun efforts, the Navy has introduced a cutting-edge hypervelocity projectile, HVP, capable of deployment from both railguns and existing firearms. The HVP comprises a tungsten shell, weighing approximately 13 kilograms and measuring around 60 centimeters in length. Remarkably, it can attain speeds of up to Mach 6, equivalent to about 7,000 km per hour, enabling it to engage targets situated up to 160 km away. What sets the HVP apart is its capacity to maneuver in mid-flight and adapt its trajectory to evade obstacles or intercept incoming threats. This versatility renders it suitable for a diverse array of missions, including surface warfare, air defense, ballistic missile defense, and long-range strikes. 
Despite these notable accomplishments, the Navy has opted to halt the development of the railgun and shift its attention to hypersonic missiles. Nonetheless, they intend to preserve the wealth of information and data derived from their testing and research, holding open the possibility of resuming the railgun project should advancements in technology make it more feasible and cost-effective in the future. Additionally, the Navy has chosen to employ the HVP in conjunction with existing firearms rather than investing in new railgun platforms. This decision can be attributed to the numerous technical challenges and limitations encountered by the railgun. The railgun demands a substantial amount of electricity to function, necessitating the use of large batteries or generators. Furthermore, it is prone to rapid wear and tear due to the friction and heat generated by the electrical current and the projectile. After each shot, the railgun necessitates a cooling down period to prevent overheating or melting and contends with aerodynamic forces and electromagnetic interference that can influence the trajectory and precision of the projectile. Another pivotal factor behind this choice lies in the shifting strategic priorities of the U.S. military. Presently, the U.S. military has redirected its focus toward the development of hypersonic missiles, capable of exceeding Mach 10, which translates to approximately 12,000 km per hour, enabling them to elude enemy defenses effectively. Hypersonic missiles present a plethora of advantages, offering heightened dependability and adaptability, given their ability to be launched from an array of platforms such as ships, submarines, aircraft, or trucks. Moreover, they outshine railguns in terms of stealth and agility, as they traverse low altitudes and exhibit the capability to alter their trajectory mid-flight. Hypersonic missiles attain speeds surpassing Mach 5, which is five times the speed of sound, or approximately 6,000 km per hour. They manifest in two primary categories, Boost Glide and Scramjet. Boost Glide missiles leverage rockets to propel a glider, which can operate at elevated altitudes, achieve remarkable speeds, and perform in-flight maneuvers to evade obstacles or intercept designated targets. Scramjet missiles, on the other hand, employ air-breathing engines to accelerate to hypersonic velocities while maneuvering during their flight. Both types of hypersonic missiles are equipped to carry either conventional or nuclear warheads. The edge held by hypersonic missiles over their conventional counterparts encompasses an array of facets, including enhanced speed, extended operational range, and reduced susceptibility. Their elevated speed permits hypersonic missiles to reach targets more rapidly and unpredictably, thereby affording adversaries less reaction time and defense opportunities. With an extended range, they can effectively strike targets from greater distances, bolstering operational flexibility and efficacy. Furthermore, their reduced vulnerability is derived from their ability to traverse low altitudes and shift direction in flight, rendering them challenging to detect or intercept by existing radar systems or missile defense mechanisms. As China and Russia have made substantial strides in the field of hypersonic weaponry, the U.S. has intensified its endeavors to develop hypersonic missiles. Diverse programs and projects have been set in motion to deploy hypersonic weapons across diverse domains and missions, encompassing air-launched systems, submarine-launched systems, surface ships, and mobile truck-mounted launchers.